Howdy again everyone! A surprisingly rare lens to find on the market today is a fisheye lens which covers a full frame, not just APS-C camera sensor, so it's refreshing to see seven artisans popping one onto the market for us, a 10mm f2.8 model as you see here. And if you're inexperienced as a photographer and you haven't heard of a fisheye lens before, well it's this. Quite simple really, it provides you images with huge barrel distortion and an incredibly wide angle of almost 180 degrees blasting into your camera. It's actually quite tricky to compose a fisheye image because they're just all background really, but when you get it right they carry a serious creative punch, and don't bother trying to simulate that effect in editing a wide angle normal image, a fisheye lens really is unique. Seven Artisans lenses currently don't have autofocus, but that's hardly a big issue on a fisheye lens. If you set it to focus from about 2 meters, then everything from there to infinity will be sharp for you. The lens will be for Sony E, Canon RF, Nikon Z, and Panasonic and Sigma L mount cameras, all full frame, and it's very reasonably priced at only 250 US dollars. I'd like to thank Seven Artisans for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this will be a totally independent review. Let's take a look at its build quality first. This is a completely typical, metal bodied, inexpensive Chinese lens in virtually every way, except for the very nice carry bag it comes in, which you saw at the beginning of the video. Tons of metal is used in the lens's construction, well, not tons, although at 570 grams it certainly does have a little weight to it. At the rear of the lens is the focus ring, which turns very smoothly and a little heavily, meaning you won't accidentally send it out of focus. As you change focus, you won't see focus breathing, but the corners are noticeably warping as the distortion pattern changes a little. In front of that comes the aperture ring, which also turns smoothly and heavily, and the aperture mechanism has eight iris blades to it. In front of that comes a non-removable metal hood, followed by that beautiful bulbous front glass element. Keep it clean, don't let it get scratched. Finally comes the lens hood, which fits snug and secure onto the front. The lens does not have image stabilization or indeed any electronic connection with your camera, and it is not possible to use filters with it. Overall, well, there are no bells and whistles to this lens, and there doesn't really need to be. It does its job simply, while feeling very tough and durable. Alright, let's look at image quality now. I'll be testing the lens on my Sony a7R 3 with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. No in-camera corrections are available with this lens, and of course it's not possible to use my test chart with a fisheye lens. At f2.8, in the middle of the image, we see stupendous sharpness, but contrast is just ok at this brightest aperture. Let's look in the corners. Ugh, things are not so good here. We see darkness, softness, and chromatic aberration. There's a noticeable improvement if you stop down to f4, particularly in contrast across the whole image frame, and with more brightness in the corners. F5.6 and F8 look way sharper, and finally, all the way down to F11, we get very good sharpness from corner to corner, although a touch of green and magenta chromatic aberration is still visible on contrasting edges here, a bit less than usual though for a fisheye lens to be honest. Overall, sharp corner image quality is something you really want on such a wide angle lens, so generally speaking, the lens's image quality is a bit rough and ready in that respect, but most landscape photographers will be happy to stop down to f11 for a deeper depth of field anyway, and with a lens this wide, you can take handheld pictures at pretty slow shutter speeds. Shooting at night though, with brighter apertures, will not be this lens's forte. For those of you interested, here is the lens's distortion pattern. I personally think its curves are quite balanced and pleasant. I don't like it when fisheye lenses have too much of a sharp pinch in the middle of their images. This lens can focus down to 17 centimeters, not great, but you can at least get somewhat close to your subject here. The good news is that close up image quality in the middle remains fantastically sharp, straight from f2.8. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights now. At f2.8 we do get some glaring here, as well as a bit of a red light ring around the periphery. Stopping down to f4 will reduce that flaring. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. In the image corners at f2.8, bright points of light see just a slight smearing. Stop down to f4 and it's mostly gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. At f4 they are already beginning to emerge on bright points of light. 
stop down to f5.6, f8 or f11 and they get progressively much stronger. Nice. And finally, let's take a look at the quality of its bokeh. It's very difficult to get out of Vega's backgrounds in a fisheye image, but when you do they are nice and smooth here, on the rare occasions that you're close enough to your subject to actually separate it from your background. Overall, this lens is a slightly cheap and cheerful way to get fisheye images onto your full frame camera, but stop it down to f11 and it'll actually offer you very sharp image quality, and at f2.8 you can still shoot at night time, albeit with a sacrifice to corner sharpness. I didn't like its heavy vignetting at f2.8 to be honest, I would try to shoot at at least f4 or darker with this lens. For 250 bucks though, it's a lot of fun for the money you're paying, you'll be tempted to leave it on your camera all day for all kinds of interesting pictures to the point of overusing it. If you want to push your creativity without spending a fortune, then I reckon this lens is worth a go. I want to say a huge thanks to all my supporters over on Patreon, you are making a big difference to me keeping these lens reviews going. If you haven't already, check it out in the description below. I love putting all kinds of exclusive bonus content and advanced previews on there for supporters. See you next time everyone.